Hi. Now in this tutorial what I want to do is show you how you can find the volume of revolution about the x-axis when you've got the equation of a curve in parametric form. And what I've done here is just taken an example where we've got x equals t squared minus 1 and y equals t cubed. And I've sketched the graph for you. You can check it out. But you'll find that when t equals 0, you get x is minus 1 and y is 0. So that gives you this point here. And as you put values of t greater than 0, you create this branch. And when you take values of t less than 0, you get this part of the curve. Now, what I want to show you then is when we take a region, and the region that I want to take is this one between x equals 0 and x equals 3. And I want to take this region and spin it about the x-axis like this. And it's going to generate this particular solid of revolution. Looks like the end, say, of a trumpet, for instance. Now, we should already know that to find the volume of revolution about the x-axis, we use this formula. The volume V is equal to pi times the integral of y squared with respect to x. And the limits are x limits that go from, say, x1 to x2. So in our example here, x1 would be 0 and x2 would be 3. Now, you could do this by making up the Cartesian equation by trying to work out the connection between y and x and then integrating it with respect to x between 0 and 3. But that can often be very complicated. Sometimes it's very difficult to get that Cartesian equation. So what we do is we can integrate parametrically. And I'll show you how. Because what we do is this is equal to pi times the integral of y squared. But instead of putting dx here, we change this to dx by dt. But then if I've introduced this dt, I'm going to put it there. It's almost as if these cancel out, leaving me with y squared dx like we had up here. But because I'm integrating now with respect to t, these limits here have to go from equivalent t limits that correspond to x1 and x2. So we could call them, say, t1 to t2. And this is an idea that we follow for all volumes of revolution when we've got to integrate parametrically. So for this particular problem then, the volume v is going to equal pi times the integral then of y squared dx by dt with respect to t. The problem is we've got to get these limits now that we've changed this to integrating with respect to t. And to do that, what we do is we say when x equals t squared minus 1, we look at what the x value is in the equation that we're given. And when x is 0, let's just put that in, we try and work out what the equivalent t value would be. So when x is 0, we've got t squared minus 1 will equal 0. So t squared would equal 1. And if we square root this, we're going to therefore have that t equals 1 or t equals minus 1. Well, clearly the minus 1 value isn't the value that we need because this is the branch where t is greater than 0. So we only need t to be equal to 1. So when x is 0, this lower limit, okay, we need to change this to t equals 1. And for the upper limit, when x was 3, we just find out what the corresponding value of t would be for that. So when t equals 3, substitute it in here. We've therefore got t squared minus 1 equals 3. Add the 1 to both sides. You've got t squared equals 4. Take the square root and therefore t would equal 2 
or t would equal minus 2. And again, because we're looking at this branch of the curve, then we'd need to have a positive value for t, so t can't equal minus 2. So we need to put that upper limit for t as being 2. Now all we need to do now is substitute then for our y squared and dx by dt. Now y squared, well y was t cubed, so we've got y squared is going to be t cubed all squared. And when it comes to dx by dt, we need to differentiate x with respect to t. So we also know that dx by dt is going to equal 2t. So let's just border that off there, okay, so it doesn't run into our solution here. So dx by dt then is 2t, we can pop that in there, and we're integrating this with respect to t. So we just need to clean this up now. We've got t cubed all squared, which is t to the power 6, multiplied by 2t, so it's going to be 2t to the power 7. You could bring the 2 out, if you like, so we've got 2 pi, and then we're integrating with respect to t from 1 to 2, t to the power 7. Now if we integrate this, we've got 2 pi, and then add 1 to the power, so that's going to be t to the power 8, and then divide by 8. Now I'm going to put the 8 out the front here, okay? And then this is between 1 and 2. The 2 eighths cancels to a quarter, so you've got pi over 4. And then when we substitute the 2 in here, we've got 2 to the power 8, minus, and then substitute the 1 in, 1 to the power 8. And if you work this out, you get 255 pi over 4. And because this is a volume, I tend to write units cubed, or cubic units. So I'm going to write units with a cube there, okay? You don't have to do that, but I always think it looks good if you are working out a volume. Okay, well, I hope that's given you some idea then how we can do volumes of revolution when we've got a parametric curve. Use your formula, just write it out, change your limits from x limits to corresponding t limits, work out what dx by dt is, and substitute all your values then into your equation. And it should be a lot easier than going about trying to find the Cartesian equation. Okay.